proven what is beyond that rock. It's also a shortcut in case you need it. What is up, everybody? I am Luke from the Master Sword Valley. Welcome back to more Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Yes, it is the Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. I've been saying, I've been excluding the the for quite a few videos now. Anyway, last time we finished up at Dragon Roost, calming Baloo and earning ourselves Din's Pearl from the Rito tribe. And in this episode, we're going to be heading out to the south just as the King of Red Lions instructed us. Let's take off from there. King of Red Lions, let's do this. Okay, fine. If you don't want it, me to save the world, then I guess I won't. I'll just sit here and enjoy this awesome music then. Okay, okay. I guess we'll have to head out. We learned from Valu to use the Wind God's Wind, which uh, we must go through this way over here to get uh, what was originally on a sign. Uh, gotta go back for this, of course. The wind shrine so we must use the wind god's wind at the wind shrine and to that i can talk about swimming right here swimming in this game outright sucks look at that over on the left over to my, above my rupees you have an air meter despite the fact that your mouth nose and mouth are clearly above the water right here why this is the case i have no freaking clue but when i come over here ouch let's check these What's this i never would have guessed thank you what does it say it appears to be markings that indicate specific directions. Now, it might not be obvious what to do at first, but we want it, but let's go and pull out the Wind Waker. Go up, right, left, right. I get left and right cues all the time. This is our first case of having to use the wind, 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 wind Waker for something useful. This is the Wind's Requiem, our first song and by far the easiest one. Pretty cool. Yep, that's a mighty nice breeze. Ah, who are you? The name's Zephos. I'm the god of the winds. So you're all the new wind waker, aren't you? I don't think I don't look like a glowing baton. Thank you. Great, great. For a beginner, you've got a nice wind sense about you. I like you, kid. <laughs> that tune you just picked up. Well, it gives you, you control over the direction the wind blows. Depending on how it's used, wind can be a good thing or a very bad thing. You want an example of it being a bad thing, then you should see my brother. It saddens me to say that my brother Cyclos is milked about his monuments here being broken, and now he spreads his time spends his time creating cyclones to torment people with. So if you'll count on any cyclones to see, chastise my brother for me, will you? And that is my request. So we're given two requests of the gods, apparently, to use the wind god's wind and to find a brother who's creating cyclones, apparently. But yes, the wind's requiem. Since we have a sailboat and not a steamboat like in Phantom Hourglass, we need the song in order to be able to go wherever we want around the sea, really. All right, now that I have the song, are you going to let me on the boat now, King? What? Why? 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 You know, what the hell? Do I have to talk to you? What do you say? Cannot depart until the wind blows south. It would be a fatal mistake to set sail under an unstable breeze. When the wind got yeah, 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 I just saw him. Let me climb into the boat. Let me climb into oh wait, I think I remember here. I actually had to uh move the wind to the south. So go up, left, right. Conducted the wind's requiem. Now there's something about this that I'll point out later, but we have this little compass right here. The current arrow shows where the wind is blowing. We want to point it to the south, where the blue arrow is. And we can finally set sail. The king is no longer going to bark at us for that. And now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and equip this all-purpose bait right here. As well as put my telescope back on Y right there to show something else. I just have the telescope out there for convenience sake, really. All right, now you let me on the boat, finally. So, first things first, now that we're on the boat, you might notice that the D-pad up there has another feature. If we press right on it, we can now use the grappling hook as a crane. We can basically haul up treasures from the sea floor like this. Of course, if nothing happens, it'll just like shake like that. We also, of course, have the telescope, which we can, which we can zoom in on Beale's ship right there. Always really nice. But with that, let's go ahead, pull the map up, and let's head out. Finally done with Dragon Roost Cap, Dragon Roost Island, even though it's got kick ass music and such. Wait. Boy, hold it right there, small fry. Hey, who are you called small? You're one to talk, bub. 
I don't know where you got your mitts on the sea child you got there, but it looks to me like it's pretty got, got nothing but seas drawn on, on it. Uh, it's just parchment paper, really? What's the matter, smaller fry? I'm just trying to be nice here. I'm telling you that you've got a problem, and you do. Don't give me that stupefied look. It makes you look like an out. You ought to be in diapers. Sure. So he's gonna teach us something about the C chart. What he's gonna do is this right here is called the map fish. He's gonna bring out a paintbrush, and somehow with precision and not making our our C chart all wet and warped, he will draw in Dragon Rouge Island. He's going to do this for every single one of these squares here. There's a real peculiar cave towards the backside here of Dragon Roost. Yeah, real peculiar, but I doubt you'll ever get there to see it, small fry. Unless you manage to sprout wings and fly, that is. Because you won't be getting there otherwise. He gives you a hint every single time, usually about the square that you're in right here. He's talking about how to get, uh, how to find the various map fish around the Great Seas. That we have to use our bait to basically, that's how we expend it on getting these squares filled in on the map here. So we have that, now it's finally set out, listening to this awesome sailing music once again. And like I said, this now that we have control of the wind, it really just makes you stop and appreciate just how big this world really is. You can really just set the camera on where it is you want to go. Uh, as usual, the arrow points in the direction of the wind. It doesn't point in the direction you're supposed to go. That is located on the map. As you can see, we have this square down here, which is where we're supposed to go. I missed the minigame, but whatever. Anyway, you're pretty much going to want to come to every square and just fill them in. You're meant to go basically all over the sea. So anytime you're passing the square, just go ahead and get the map fish location. It really helps with like the exploration and such. And you're going to have to go to later squares later in the game. Or squares you've already visited later in the game. And by the way, if you hadn't seen, I'm going to be reading every single one of the map fish secrets here. Some of them I do read, but a lot of them I skip past because I know what uh, like entails about the I about the island and such. So again, he's gonna go and pull out the map, pull out his paintbrush, and he's gonna draw in Fire Mountain. Couldn't call it a volcano. Really, really couldn't. I don't know why. So he says here, you see that volcano is spewing out lava like there's no tomorrow. There's a great treasure hidden in that thing. Thing is, everyone who's tried to see inside has been blasted away by the great balls of fire. See, if you want to get in that island, you want to go one, find the island that's one square north and four squares west of here. There's the power to freeze anything that's hidden. So he kind of spoils something right there. Uh, I'm not just going to leave things at that. I'm not going to like say what they are. But now that we've heard his hint, I may direct your attention down to the gamepad for a second to show you that any square that's filled in from the map fish, you can tap on the map fish and basically read his hint again if you need it. However, that's only in the HD remake. If you're playing the original GameCube, you don't get that benefit. You don't have to use your bait again to read the hint again. But really, it's just there if you're like a first time player and have never really experienced this game. He'll give you a helpful hint uh, for, you know, like the whole area, really. Some of them are helpful. Some of them kind of aren't. Anyway, we're coming up here to another lookout tower. I figured I might as well just go ahead and check these out here. Just to, you know, show them off, because I think because there's quite a few that I've never actually been to uh, in my in any of my play. These of Wind Waker, really, I kind of follow the same pattern uh, when it comes to uh, my Wind Waker list play or Wind Waker playthroughs. Excuse me. So let's climb up. Ah, as you notice, this game, just like a bunch of other 3D Zelda games, has time. And you also notice that's going to be all stormy out. That really only happens out on the sea, not when you're on a main island island. So right here we have a bokoblin so we can go ahead and just steal a joy pendant for free and not have to like beat him and hope that he drops one so instead i'm just letting you flow into the ocean haha -ha, sucker got some more pots up here I mean, and this chest is just here by default uh kind of don't know why it's not like one of the ones you have to kill all the enemies back here oh we're going to just get a yellow rupee for it not really worth it but i might come back here because uh there's cannons on it which uh, can actually lead to another sort of reward should we be able to take out those cannons. We can't right now, unfortunately. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue sailing. So as you can see now, it is be approaching nighttime and the clock down there in the corner is not very good at, t at uh, showing you like how, what time it is necessarily. Uh, most games do not really learn from Majora's Mask very well. So, yeah, it's nighttime. You can still, some things are actually different uh, at nighttime. Like, uh, there's actually like some glowing rings that you'll find out on the sea. 
uh, which can you can dig a treasure with. Most time it's rupees, so I wouldn't go for it if you're playing GameCube since your wallet is so limited, unlike in the remake here. Uh, so yeah, so as you see right there, there's that shimmering light right there. That is actually a result of our treasure charts. I'm not gonna show the rewards until much later. Well, you'll find just like basic rings out at the sea at night, which you know you can. Um, what am I trying to say? You can dig up, you can like haul up treasure and the likes and such. Anyway, here's the map fish for our next square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, small fry. It always calls you small fry. I don't know if he's trying to be a jerk or if he's just trying to be honest or what. Anyway, this is Eastern Triangle Island, a place that'll actually be important later. Trust me on that, it will be. Hey. Have you ever caught a fairy before? Because from what I've been told, when you've been beaten to a pulp by monsters and things, you think it finally made a match? Yeah, he's, so he's talking to you about uh, capturing uh, fairies in your bottle. He's talking about a place that you can actually get a bottle. Go south from here until you see a miserable looking submarine floating in the sea. Look there. He actually hints at something we're going to be doing on our way to the south here. So yeah, there's not really much we can do here. By the way, those things that you're seeing out in the water, those aren't uh, necessary. Those aren't bad for you. They're literally just updrafts so that they can give you like a, a jump. They will spin you in another direction, but they're, they're kind of fun. They're harmless though. Okay. A lot of times I, f I often forget uh, to put my bait back on once I run out. Okay. Not really a whole lot to say while I'm out at the sea, especially when it's nighttime out, you can really just I uh, appreciate all the sailing. You don't get the awesome music, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I have a way of passing the time, but who knows? Maybe we'll get that soon. Maybe we won't. I don't know. All right. Some more rupees right here. Like I said, I'm going to go good and go for every map fish location that's in the square that we pass on the way to, you know, wherever. Sometimes I might have to go out of my way to get them, but I mean, I'd rather have a complete filled in map. Once again, with precision, he draws in Bomb Island here. Nothing we can do there yet, but it's a completely optional place. You don't have to go there for any reason. You ought to come sail these seas on nights when the right half of the moon is missing. It'll give you shivers, Fry. I think that's also spoilers for something later in the game that's actually uh, like part required part of the story. I don't really know, though, but uh, on the note of an island that we can't go to yet, you might see that out there. I'm not going to plot the telescope because you can obviously see it. This over here. This is what the map fish was hinting to us back at Eastern Triangle Island right here. It's a submarine. And we also have a Bokoblin here so we can get another free joy pendant while we're at it. Unfortunately, now this music, I don't like it compared to uh, when you're on the island uh, battling. I'm not really a fan of it. Like, I think the uh, battle music, uh, like normally, is awesome. I know that's kind of a personal preference. You might like it, you might not. I, you're entitled to your own opinion. I don't care. Anyway, let's go inside. And down here we have some more rats as well as some more bokoblins. Ha! You, I thwarted his attack by spin attacking. That's how overpowered that move is. It really is both a fan favorite and the most overpowered. Oh, uh, I meant to grab some joy pendants, but I guess not. We're gonna have a, plant, a chance to get plenty of them later. Screw you too, rat. Hey, where are you? Get over here. Get over here. Most projectiles will kill any small enemies, so you saw they killed the keys and dragon roots. You saw they can kill the rats pretty easily right there. So, yeah, grab, grappling, man, grappling hook is really helpful at getting some treasures for you. So we've taken out all the bokoblins. We don't have to take out the rats for some reason. I don't really know why. Whoop. Just go and destroy these. Yep. I love all the noises that Link makes as well in this. It's kind of not really the case in um, Ocarina of Time Majora's Mask. He'll just like pick them up silently. Eh, screw you, rat. But anyway, we'll go ahead and open this up and get something we already have. An empty bottle. So now we have two of them. We hit now can... We can, I can double bitch slap. I didn't show it off before, but if you equip the bottle and just hold nothing in it, whoop, whoop, whoop. You can imagine like Medley or Tetra standing there, standing like in the way. All right, let's get, that's really the only thing we came in here for. There are some few resources as you can see that I grabbed, but we won't worry about that. Let's go ahead and get on our boat and sure, I guess we can go for this other tower over here. I don't really 
really tend to, I tend not to go for the towers because like some of them have cannons. You can actually get two rewards for both killing the enemies and taking out all the um, uh, enemies on it or taking out cannons and enemies on it. But I guess I'll just go ahead and take out this one. Just to show it's on it. And like I said, time passes normally when you're out on the sea. So if you're on a submarine or if you're on these towers, time will pass normally. But if you're on an island like Dragon Roost or Windfall, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, time will just stop. It's kind of like being in a town in um, Ocarina of Time. Or Twilight Princess, really. So again, these, like I already said, these towers are good uh, resource uh, replenishment areas. But it's not really something you had to use uh, like later in the game. And we get a red rupee right there. I did not mean to use my bait. I guess we'll whoop, land on the boat. Ah, still waiting to land, still waiting for one day that I can actually land on the boat, whether it be by complete accident or what. All right, so now we have gone through Dragon Roost, Fire Mountain, Eastern Triangle Island, and Bomb Island. We're approaching the end of the square for Bomb Island towards those really tall towers over there. It's not the two towers like Lord of the Rings, but still, two big towers. It also rains here in the game. Not like the rain really does anything else to help you here. Right. I am purposely going to go for the map fish. But if, as you can see, if we could approach this place here. Check this out. Hey. Yes, do you not see what rises up from the horizon? That is where you must go, Link. The Forest Haven. And personally, I love the music here. Way more than Dragon Race. It may appear as though this is but a great tree rising far above the ocean surface, but it is a sacred place. It is, it is inside the grotto that you will find the spirit of the earth, the great Deku tree. You must speak with the Deku tree and receive it from him a sacred gem known as Faror's Pearl. I fear that Ganon's vile hand may have already reached this most sacred of, of sanctuaries. Go forth with caution, Link. All right, well, I guess I'm not going to go for the map fish uh, this time. We will another time because I don't want to lose the awesome music. Anyway, when a, let, when a day has passed, I believe it's supposed to be in game and not like real time and such, you'll receive a letter here to my son superior. This is for uh, completing the mail sorting the game, which will reward you a piece of heart. Very, very nice. Let me get up here. Um, let me see just for a second. Yeah, I'm going to go buy more bait. I'll be right back. Oh man, I right, can only say that boat apparently uh, got rid of the awesome music. Anyway, sh change of plans right here. You might notice on the gamepad, I actually went with a different item. I went and bought a Chioi pair from him. This will actually, uh, this is actually gonna be kind of important for a side thing really, not so much the main quest, but it's gonna lead to some, uh, it's pretty annoying what the main thing that's going to be. But you'll see what happens what later. I'm gonna just gonna get the map fish. I'm actually gonna wait for daytime. After I read his hint, of course. This is the Forest Haven. Bomb Island, I sometimes see a merchant of incredible girth with monstrous on his back. Now who, now what could he be doing in that lonely little isle? I'll tell you, there's some strange folk in the world, Fry. That's, uh, that's foreshadowing for a later quest. Uh, pretty, also a pretty long quest. Okay, never mind. It's just not come returning daytime. I wanted to hear the awesome music more, but I guess not. Oh, well, I guess we're going to continue with just the main boring quest. That sucks, really. Okay. I'm going to also be a little hesitant on my breast here because um, my nose started bleeding, and I don't want to run and grab a tissue and just shove it up my nose. <laughs> so I'm going to try and hold it as best I can. Anyway, we're coming up here. We have new enemies. These are Boko Babas right here. Uh, very reminiscent of the Deku Babas in previous games. If you use the grapple hook on them, you will get a Boko Baba seed, which is an item for later. It's actually pretty useful on this island right here. But um, obviously, we can't do, utilize that yet. Now, these guys can be pretty dangerous if you fight them close. And obviously, that's the only method of uh, damage at this point is, is uh, close range uh, sword combat right here. Uh, their next snap instantly you can get um, Deku sticks for it or Boko sticks or something uh, Considering that these are from Boko Babas right here. But yeah, we can basically use their necks as weapons here Which I'm actually going to do Whoop. Whoop. 
Yeah, cause them to stand up straight so you can just hit them and snap their necks instantly. I love it. Well, I don't love it necessarily. Pull out the grappling hook right here. This is one thing that I'll give this game is that you actually utilize your various items quite a bit in various places. You'd think like, as you get the grappling hook, you use it what you use it in the um, dragon roost and that's it. But no, you actually have a fair number of uses where you need it. And same thing with other items as well. Uh, hang on. All right, I just couldn't take it anymore. So I wanted a piece of tissue and shoved it up my nose. Anyway, right here, another new enemy, Octorox. They, as far as I know, cannot be defeated with the sword. So you basically just use your shield to put, you know, to basically block the projectiles against them. You can try and use your grappling hook, but I think you'll just like end up stealing items from them and such. Can't actually kill them, unfortunately. I would have tried it on that Octorok, but it would just went away and I tried to pull out my sword. Anyway, let's go inside. Welcome to the inner part of the forest sanctuary here, or the forest haven. Same, same deal, really. Lots of foliage, lots of cool looking bugs flying around and such. I mean, this place is really pretty looking. It looked look a lot better in uh, the morning, but of course I can't play in the morning because it just happened to be nighttime. Like, you know, when I got here and such. Anyway. So. Uh, sorry, I don't really have a lot to say. It, it feels really weird to talk with a tissue in my nose. Like, I can feel the vibrations of it. It's so weird. Anyway, I'm looking, I'm just... Look around here for some kind of later, really. Not important right now. We we'll go up here and look who. <laughs> oh my god, it's weak to water! The two dollars are the closest anything to water. What we do is roll into it, and there we go. We have some enemies to fight. We have new enemies, green choo-choos. They are like red choo-choos, die in one hit, but uh, they they can actually hide in their invincibility state. And they, grab gr they drop green choo jelly, which is actually different from red from red choo jelly, obviously. Die. You actually want to kill these guys quick because if you don't, they will actually respawn. Those clothes you wear, are you by chance the hero who came with the King of Red Lions? What? Do you not understand the ancient Hylian tongue? Mm, you are not who I thought you were. I must apologize. I was in error. I saw your clothing and suddenly I felt a longing for an age gone by. That longing caused the ancient tongue to pass my lips. I am the guardian spirit of this forest haven, the Deku Tree. I owe you my thanks for your aid in ridding me of those foul creatures. You mean chew jellies? Tell me, was it not the King of Red Lions, the boat who speaks, who led you to this place? Aha, uh -huh, ya! Yeah. So it is true. Then you have come because here yeah, because you have need of the Pearl of the Goddess. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, yeah. I see. I knew there was a reason the monsters had begun to con conjurate, congregate in the regions around my wood. Now I understand it. He has returned. Ganon has returned. In that case, we must make haste. Korax, little children of the woods, this traveler is not your enemy. Let your hearts be at ease and show yourself. I guess these guys were hidden more, but how did they not fall off the tree when I rolled into him? Anyway, these guys are the Korax. Some people believe that these are evolved forms of the Kokiri from Ocarina of Time. What do you call yourselves? Link? Well, then, Link, these are the Korax, the spirits of the forest. Once upon a time, long ago, the Koroks took on human forms, but when they came to live in the sea, they took these shapes. Now they fear people, but to me, they will ever be my cherished little children. See? See it supports the idea that they must, must have been Kokiri. As it happens, you have come just in time for a ceremony that the Koroks hold but once every year. It is about to begin. I shall grant the pearl to you once the ceremony is complete. I must apologize for the brief delay, but the ceremony is not completed soon, and ill fate could befall us. So let it begin. Are you ready, my children? You must complete a ceremony to give me a sacred jewel. We are not the great Deku Tree. Something terrible has happened. It is Makar. Makar! What, what is the matter, Linder? You and Makar are always late. N no, it is not that. Oh, great Deku Tree. Makar fell into the forbidden woods. What? The Forbidden Woods? 
I told him to be careful, but still the car flew above the forbidden woods. And as he drew close to it, foolish little Makar. Link, how you, you have heard all this. The Forbidden Woods are right beside the hallowed island of our forest haven. Those woods, the whole region is a vile place that is home to evil beasts. And now it seems they have taken a child into the forest named Makar. Your presence here is no mistake, I deem. The King of Red Lions likely expects great deeds of you. It is why he brought you here. I'm sorry to ask this of you, but can you go rescue young Makar for me? But great Deku Tree, people cannot fly through the air. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, child. You are right. It is not possible to enter those woods from the sea, isn't it? Link, I would guess from your size that you are heavier than my Korok children. Yet I think we may still be able to solve this dilemma. You must use the item that I shall bestow upon you and fly through the sky. All that for a leaf. Are you serious right now? <laughs> Forgive me, Link, but could you climb up to my crown and get the leaf from up there? Oh, great. So we got to do this thing for you, huh? Can't just give it to me? Nah, that'd be just too convenient, wouldn't it be? So we are given our new objective. In order, Apparently, in order for our pearl to be spawned from this great Deku tree, we must complete a ceremony. Freaking lovely. What does Korak say? The Forbidden Woods were once our home. They were peaceful back then. I would guess that our homes should still exist somewhere deep in these woods. Just look for the stump shaped houses. Now, this is kind of going into like my theories, some online theories that the, obviously the Koroks could probably be the known as the Kokiri from Ocarina of Time. But the Great Deku Tree that we see now, I believe it to be the fully matured one of the Great Deku Tree sprout at the end of Ocarina of Time after completing the Forest Temple. Because supposedly that this timeline where this link takes place and like Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks and such is the adult timeline. So this would be when the Great Deku Tree Sprout is sprouting or is like growing and such. And I think this is the fully matured version in this game. What do you say? Oh, you're quite good at that, Mr. Knight. Just keep doing that. Just keep doing that until you get to all the way up to the top. All right. If you try out. If you shoot out facing the wrong direction, don't panic. If you don't tilt in any direction, you land back in the bottle butt. Okay. Good to know. So these are called bubble buds. But as you can see what we're doing here, we're basically platforming our way up to the top. Pretty darn cool. Like one of the first few Zelda games to actually have platforming in the game. I, for one, really like that detail. It kind of spawned uh, how the kind of gameplay works in um, like uh, Link's Awakening, or no, not Link's Awakening. Um, I guess technically, yeah, but like games like uh, uh, Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild and such with like the run button and such. We get up here and we get ourselves a Deku Leaf! Plant your feet on the ground we, so we can use it to stun enemies, but also drift through the air with using magic power. Swordsman, over here! Please, you must, you must fly from over here using your Deku Leaf! Well, that seems all well and good, but I think we're gonna call things right here. One, I think this episode has gone long enough, and two, I hate this tissue in my nose, so I want to get rid of it. I also clung my bloody nose and such, so we're gonna call things right there. Next time on The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, we are going to head out to the Forbidden Woods in search of Makar. See you guys then.